um, and we'll also be um, accepting public comment. With me uh, here is Commissioner Went, and by phone we have all three of the other commissioners. Um, commissioners, would you um, announce yourselves so that we can establish quorum? Hi, this is Commissioner Loretta Smith. <laughs> Commissioner Loretta Smith. Commissioner Diane McKeel. And Commissioner Judy Schipath. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. May I have a motion on the consent calendar? So moved. Second. Commissioner Smith moves. Commissioner McKeel seconds. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? The consent calendar is approved. And we will now go move to public comment. Go ahead, Mr. Wickman. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioner. For the record, I am Carl Wickman. In the last 40 years, the role of women in Multnomah County government has significantly increased. In 1974, Alice Corbett is elected to the board. The first all-women commission was convened in 1986. Multnomah County can look back with pride at the steps it has taken. It took the federal government 196 years to name its first building for a woman, but Multnomah County put, her, put its agenda on the fast track and it only took 128 years for it to name its first building to honor women. That building is the Wickman Building. The Wickman Building is not only a physical landmark in the county, but it stands as a historical landmark in Oregon. Neither Oregon Historical Society's Lisa Canty Jones or Val Balstrom of the Oregon Encyclopedia know of any Oregon public building that's not a school dedicated to honor a woman prior to 1982. The Wickman Building stands as the first. During our research, we also discovered that Senator Hatfield has more buildings named for him than all of the other official buildings in the state of Oregon. The minutes of the 1982 meeting have an error. It states that Commissioner Blumenauer read the proclamation. With the assistance of County Archivist Terry Baxter and the Oregon Archives, I obtained an audio cassette recording of that meeting. Commissioner Blumenauer did not read the proclamation. I would like to take this opportunity to read it into the record. In the matter of dedicating the old Arlita Heights Library building to the memory of Leah Wickman, whereas the county executive, the Board of County Commissioners, and the Multnomah County Community Action Agency wish to honor Leah Wickman, a valued member of our community who died on May 5, 1982, and whereas Leah served two terms as a dedicated and hardworking chairperson of the Multnomah County Community Action Agency Administrating Board, and whereas Leah was a vital member of many community organizations, including Multnomah County's Powellhurst Community Planning Group, Snowcap, the League of Women Voters, and Meadowland Little League, and whereas Leah was a partner of Multnomah County in working to improve the lives and welfare of its citizens, and whereas Leah was an activist volunteer dedicated to the causes that needed her most, and a friend and a supporter when we needed her help and affection. Now, therefore, we join in dedicating the old Arlita Heights Library Building to the memory of Leah Wickman and her contributions to our community. Signed this 21st day of October 1982, Donald E. Clark, County Executive, Caroline Miller, Presiding Officer, Commissioners Gladys McCoy, Dennis Buchanan, Gordon Shadburn, Earl Blumenauer, and Carol Murdoch, Chairperson of the Mecca Administrating Board. This is one of the last official documents that also uses the term chairperson. The next year, the County Charter Review Commission implemented a change to use a general use of the term chair or presiding officer. On Thanksgiving Day, you might consider wishing Leah Wickman what would have been her 90th birthday. I want to thank you for your time and wish you and your families a very happy holiday season. Thank you very much.